is Valley News Live at 6. Good evening, everyone. We begin with breaking news. We now know three people have been arrested in connection to the body found near the Red River on Sunday. Police say George Ortiz, Joseph Poitra, and David Reneros were arrested yesterday in connection to the murder of Philip Dewey Bergquist. Ortiz is charged with intentional murder, Poitra with accomplice to murder, and Reneros with tampering with evidence. Let's take you now to where Bergquist's body was found by police over the weekend. Valley News Team's Kellen Harmon is there live with more on what he learned from police. Kellen. Mike Stacy, we did learn the suspects, their charges, and that it was a murder at City Hall. And behind me here is where police say they pulled out the body of Bergquist on Sunday. Now, at the presser, we talked to Assistant State's Attorney Ryan Youngren, who told us that they don't have the confirmed cause of death, but that there were multiple stab wounds. Uh, we're all, he also told us that the suspects and the victim were all known to each other and that it appeared he did die sometime Saturday evening. They did not specify what time exactly. Uh, Chief Zabolski did say that the homeless community was a significant help in locating these suspects, as well as surveillance video. They haven't said uh, what video that is or where it came from. Uh, and Youngrid also did state that we uh, could see the men in court later this week, uh, but we don't have a date for sure. Mike, Stacy. All right, thanks, Kellen, for that live report. We have more breaking news for you. Traffic is being rerouted on 40th Avenue southwest of Cheyenne High School right now. This comes after a crash involving a motorcycle and at least one other vehicle. No word on the condition of those involved. The roads should be back open later this evening. We'll keep you posted as we learn more. Another above average November day for us to start off this new month. Let's check in uh, with our chief meteorologist, Hutch Johnson, on the switching of gears, so to speak. Hutch? Indeed, we have a gorgeous setting sun behind me right now as we head into the next uh, 24 hours. There'll be some big time changes and they'll begin overnight as we take a look at some areas with a chance of some snow before we close out the day tomorrow and a very active weather pattern in the forecast. Let's take a look at what we have going on with that change. First and foremost, it's a roller coaster ride. Today we saw temperatures that soared into the 60 to 70 degree range and tomorrow First thing to fall, the temperatures. Then after that, some precipitation will fall. South winds right now gusting over 30 miles per hour at times. Starting to taper off just a little bit over the last hour. That trend will continue, although it will remain breezy. 60s and low 70s now. Wadena still at 72. Sisseton 70. And we have 68 in the Jamestown area with 70 in Sisseton. And Elbow Lake at 67. It's a fair evening, but it's very clear. There are big time changes heading our way. One of the first things that'll change will be the wind direction overnight. But for now, quiet, a few passing clouds and your planning forecast. Get out and enjoy because the wind tapers off and it'll be very pleasant in the 60s. Remember, average highs are in the mid to upper 40s this time of year and many areas tomorrow. We'll see falling temperatures in the afternoon with a chance of some precipitation. We'll have hour by hour details and we'll look ahead at that unsettled pattern coming up here in just a few more moments. All right, thanks so much, Hutch. University of North Dakota officials saying today that they found even more human indigenous remains on their campus, in addition to the dozens found back in August. This is the first update since the initial announcement on August 31st. UND's president, Andrew Armacost, says that at least one of the indigenous ancestors is in the care of their School of Medicine and Health Sciences. He also says even more could be found within their collection of skeletal remains used in the school's anatomy department. The school is bringing in all skeletal remains for examination by their consulting team. And UND says that they are remaining dedicated to returning the remains and artifacts to their rightful place. A father is speaking out after he believes his daughter wasn't given justice on Monday. His daughter was the victim of a sex crime against a minor, and the man responsible will serve no prison time. Valley News Timmy's Aaron Walling brings us the story. It's disgusting. Chris Carlisle is devastated, frustrated, and overall disgusted with how the court handled his daughter's case. I, I feel heartbroken. He says his daughter was raped multiple times, starting when she was just 13 years old. At the time, Christian Denault was 16. He pled guilty to corruption of a minor where the victim is 15 or older or the defendant is under 22 years old. That's a Class A misdemeanor. And Denault was given a deferred sentence, and he will serve no time in jail. 
what I ended up putting my daughter to go through to try this case was ridiculous. And if we would have known this was the outcome, my daughter probably wouldn't have agreed to it. In the state of North Dakota, a Class A misdemeanor can carry a maximum penalty of 360 days in prison. Erica Hovey with Vogel Law says each case is always different. Because there are so many layers that go on with these cases. Um, when it comes to the person, people that are involved, the type of evidence that there is, um, there's a gambit of issues that, that come up with before someone can make a judgment as to what, what type of sentence someone received. There are some like Carlisle that believe that some of the sentences for those that commit sex crimes against minors can be too light. Cass County Assistant State's Attorney Ryan Youngren says not everyone's going to be happy with the results of a case. There's not often uh, a perfect outcome in a criminal case. A lot of times uh, uh, cases aren't exactly the way that every party wishes them to be, but uh, that's the nature of the criminal justice system. In the end, nothing can be changed about the outcome. Now Carlisle just hopes to move on and find closure for his daughter. Back to trying to get her to, to speak with counselors and everything else that we're, you know, supposed to be trying to do and, you know, trying to get her to, to put this behind her and it's been extremely difficult. In Fargo, Air Walling, Valley News Live. And for more information on the state's laws on sex crimes against minors, go to our website, valleynewslive.com and click on this story. There's an ad running now on TV and radio from the Minnesota DFL with bold statements about Senate District 4 candidate Dan Bomer. He released a statement on social media saying the ad is filled with half truths and lies. It mentions his messy divorce, domestic assault and how he treats his children. But he says these claims were all dismissed by law enforcement and court for lack of evidence. He called on his opponent to request that the ads be stopped. Now, Bomer's opponent in this year's race, Rob Kupek, says he also released a statement on the ad saying it's important to remember Dan Bomer is not the victim. Kupek says that former neighbors and family members of Bomer reached out to him privately to share information of assaults of one of his ex-wives. He says he chose not to make it public and says he's shocked to see the ad created without his knowledge by the DFL, especially since it references kids who may have been victimized. Kupek goes on to say that this wasn't something that was just chalked up and he supports survivors of domestic violence. So far this week for early voting in Cass County, more than 4,000 people have made their ways to the polls. For those wanting to vote early, you have until Friday. Five voting centers are open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. According to the Cass County Finance Office, there have also been more than 6,000 absentee ballots returned. For more information on early voting and what you'll be voting on this election, visit valleynewslive.com and click on our election tab. A West Fargo man is asking for the city's help tonight, saying that the air in his neighborhood isn't safe. Steve Narlock says it was about six years ago when a concrete excavating business moved to the other side of the river, bringing what he says is constant haze and toxic dust to the neighborhood. Health-wise, you can't stand out, you can't sit outside when they're grinding, you can't breathe, your eyes itch all the time. Narlock adds that he and his neighbors have spoken at city commission meetings, called police and the Environmental Protection Agency, all with no luck. The city of West Fargo says officials are reviewing details to determine if there's an ordinance violation, but adds there are no citations at this time. Later on Valley News Live at 6, big moves have been made in the future of tribal gam gaming. We have the details. And more fun temperatures as we head into that first week of November, but we're going to wave goodbye to that 70 degree weather and hello to much colder temperatures and a few flakes are in the forecast. Look at those gusts over 40 miles per hour today for some. Hour by hour details are straight ahead. This is Valley News Live.